Good evening and welcome to the January 7, 2020 edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar for the top stories we're tracking this evening. Medical doctor decries poor healthcare system under the coalition. PVC promises to restore subsidy to electricity and water for pensioners. Coalition overpaid $103 million to contractors, Auditor General report reveals. Miner dies after boat collides with a tree in the Pomeran River. And in sport, Ghana Jaguars off to Antigua to defend four day title. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick, and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at SlimJet, City Mall, second floor, by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Welcome back. Now for the news in detail. Dr. Erica Ford has decried the deplorable state of affairs of the public health care system under the five-year rule of the coalition government. She has received the commitment of the People's Progressive Party to decentralize health care when the parties returned to power. As such, she is calling for the decentralization of public health care. The health sector has been shrouded with multiple allegations of corruption, with one major one involving Dr. George Norton, the Minister of Public Health in 2015. Dr. Norton told the National Assembly 
that the past the PPP government was paying an exorbitant amount to store pharmaceuticals at New GPC Incorporated. This was later found to be false and was followed by an apology by Dr. Norton. He had used his initial allegation as the rationale for giving Linden Holdings Company a contract worth $12.5 million monthly to store medical drugs in Sussex Street, Charlestown. Additionally, the government was bashed for handpicking Anson McCall to supply pharmaceuticals, a contract worth well over $600 million. The coalition claimed the contract was awarded because the drugs were needed immediately. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. People's Progressive Party intends to properly care senior citizens that have worked tirelessly to advance the economy. When elected to office, the party has a special package for pensioners. Here is the plan for the elderly in this report. The People's Progressive Party government had implemented a strategy to ease the financial burden from pensioners. Pensioners under this administration did not have to pay for electricity and water as the state subsidized this. However, when the coalition took power in 2015, this policy was changed. The APNU AFC government removed the subsidy but increased the old age pension. The PPPC is not pleased with the decision of the coalition and has vowed to restore the subsidy to senior citizens. PPPC executive Juan Egil urged the elderly to vote for their utility subsidy. Come March 2nd, with your vote, it will be restored. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The coalition today signed a contract with construction company BK International for the construction of the Yarrow Cabra Secondary School on a Suez Dyke Lane in Highway at a whopping cost of $826 million. The signing was done despite the Granger Coalition now being in a caretaker mode since the passage of a no-confidence vote on December 21, 2018 and the subsequent dissolution of the Parliament. The Caribbean Court of Justice during supplementary court rulings maintained that the administration should hold elections as outlined by the country's constitution following a no-confidence motion passage. We tell you now that the leak Auditor General Report of 2018 has revealed that $103 million in interest have been earned from the $18 million signing bonus. Has revealed that $103 million in interest were earned from part of the signing bonus. The interest was earned from investments during the period November 9, 2016 to December 31, 2018. The government of Ghana received a sum from United States of America oil giant ExxonMobil as a signing bonus in October 2016. According to the audited report, amongst totaling U.S. $15.831 million were transferred in investment account and used to purchase overseas bonds. This happened during the period November 9, 2016 to November 17, 2016. In January 2019, the value of investments appreciated to U.S. $14.545 million from U.S. $14.477 million, an increase of U.S. $67,705. According to the report, the sum was transferred from the Bank of Ghana and paid into the Consolidated Fund Bank account in 2018 and 2019. 
The coalition has been caught doling out hefty sums over paying contractors for works done. This revelation was made by the Auditor General in a 2018 report. The Auditor General report for the fiscal year ending December 2018 revealed that overpayments amounting to $166.07 million were made for works on 90 contracts administered by ministries, departments and regions in 2018. At the time of reporting in September 2019, a total of $20.041 million was recovered. Taking the repayments into account, overpayments totaling $416.035 million remain outstanding. According to the audited report, a total of $92.367 million in overpayments was from the Ministries of Public Infrastructure and Social Protection. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure accounts for approximately 69% in overpayments. Amongst totaling $73.709 million were overpaid to Regions 2, 8, 9 and 10. Still ahead, construction work are arrested with loaded firearm. And in sport, local boxers arrive in Cuba for three-month training. These and more, when we return, stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens. Our product, your creation. Apply now for your discount card at Tayo Future Shop. Every time you shop using your discount card, your percentage increases. Start from 5% off. Your next purchase, 7% off. Then, 10% off, etc. Until you start getting wholesale and factory price. Check in store for more details. Conditions apply. Help me get me tire discount card. <laughs> Wait, man. Why you do next, man? Buy the whole tire store? Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Welcome back. You're still with MTV's News Update. Presidential candidate of the People's Progressive Party Civic, Dr. Irfan Ali, said to thousands of party supporters that he's not making promises but rather laying out his implementable plans. Today, my brothers and sisters, I am not here to deliver promises, but I am here with this wonderful team to outline aspects of a clear plan and vision to take our country forward. A plan that is not only defined by oil and gas, but one that speaks to the holistic aspirations of the Guyanese people. 
Presidential candidate for PPPC, Dr. Irfan Ali, told thousands of supporters when he becomes president, he would implement all the plans outlined for Guyanese. He noted that his party has a solid track record. The PPPC was in government for 23 consecutive years from 1992 to 2015, encompassing five presidents. The developments made by the PPPC when in government includes the Burbies River crossing, the expansion of the East Bank Road, the initiation of the Chedi Jagan International Airport expansion project, and the East Coast four-lane highway project. The party also made yearly contribution towards the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuku, for it to be operable, employing thousands of Guyanese. This was later reversed by the coalition. Reporting for MTV News Update, Luan Williams. A 25-year-old miner died early this morning in a boat collision on the Pomeroon River. That is Rennie France of Grand Friendship Canal, Lower Pomeroon River. The accident occurred between five minutes past midnight and one hour today. At the time of the accident, the wooden boat was being driven by another miner, 27-year-old Dennis Light, who was injured in the accident. Light and France were said to be heading home from the Pomeroon River into the Friendship Canal when the boat collided with a tree. On impact, the men were pitched from the boat and sustained injuries about their bodies. They were rescued by public-spirited persons and taken to the Oscar Joseph District Hospital, where France was pronounced dead on arrival. Light remains a patient. Police investigations are ongoing. Three men involved in a robbery of a West Coast Barbies businessman and his family is being sought by ranks of the Ghana Police Force. Ankaran Lucky Charan, owner of a cash fashion located at Lot 55 Waterloo Bath Settlement, West Coast Burbies, was on Saturday robbed and beaten by a team of gun totting bandits as he was closing up his business about 1845 hours. Lucky Charan noticed a white motor car suddenly stopped in front of the business. Within seconds, one of the three bandits grabbed hold of the owner's pants waist and robbed him of $150,000 cash. The bandits carted off with wristwatches, perfumes, an Xbox, two laptops valued $260,000, and gold and diamond jewelry from the upper flat. After robbing the family, the bandits made go their escape via the waiting white car. It was later found abandoned in the number no. 7 village west coast of Burbies. When contacted today, commanding officer of the region, Calvin Brutus, indicated that the police investigation into the matter is still ongoing. The three suspects remain on the run. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. Police have arrested a 25-year-old construction worker of Good for Walking East Coast Demerara for being in possession of a Glock 19 pistol with seven live rounds and marijuana. Police headquarters reported that ranks acted on intelligence gathered went to the Prince William Street Pleasance East Coast Demerar, where the construction worker was observed. Upon seeing the police, he threw away an object which was immediately retrieved by the ranks and was found to be a firearm containing live rounds. He was also searched and police found six grams of cannabis. He's being processed for court. A pensioner is now dead after she was struck down today by a speeding motor car. A motor vehicle accident which occurred today on the Nick Public Road, Quarantine Burbies, about 10.35 hours, claimed the life of an 81-year-old woman. She lived at Lot 4D, Nick, Quarantine Burbies. Police have identified the dead woman as Parvati Ramsaran. Based on their findings, Ramsaran was crossing the road heading home when suddenly she was struck down by motor car PPP 1008, driven by a 25-year-old man of Rob Street, Lacey Town, Georgetown. Inquiries disclosed prior to the impact, the motor car was moving at a fast rate of speed as Ramsaran was on the center of the pedestrian crossing. 
With multiple injuries about her body, Ram Saran was picked up by public spirited persons and rushed to the Port Morant Public Hospital, where she was pronounced dead on arrival. The driver, who passed the breathalyzer test, remains in police custody, assisting with investigations. Reporting from TV News Update, LaShawna Gomes Cornelius. Coming up after the break, Court Round Up, MTV's Sports Update and more. Stay with us. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite free and water resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty, along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Ya tere baajo mera Sachiya mohabbata ve Wahi kitte aur nahi ho milna Eighty percent of the population around the world have a stomachal problem because the water is contaminated. Some of these stomachal problems are diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, filaria. Avoid this sickness with the latest water purifier. Drink clean, fresh mineral water at all the time. Just put water from the pipe, the river, or rainwater at the top of the water purifier, and the system is going to remove all the impurities. Easy to use, easy to sample, no current, no batteries. Purify more than 10,000 liters of water. Using Softex toilet tissue. Available in leading supermarkets countrywide, Softex is always silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp and babies love it. Softex comes available in single rolls, economy pack, six pack, and one dozen packages. Just perfect for any budget. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, telephone 622 4197. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. A chainsaw operator and father of two was today committed to stand trial for the murder of his reputed wife. 51-year-old Devan Ann Narayan was committed by Magistrate Esther Sam, who presided over the preliminary inquiry at the Anna Regina Magistrate's Court. The charge read that Narayan on May 16, 2019 stabbed 39-year-old Farida Kayyum to death at the Riverstown Anna Regina Esquipo Coast home. According to reports, on the day in question, Narayan and his reputed wife were in the kitchen area at their home when an argument ensued. It is alleged that Narayan armed himself with a knife which he used to stab the woman several times about the body. The matter was reported to the police and when Ranks arrived at the home, the woman was already dead. Narayan was then arrested and taken to the Saudi hospital where he was treated for ingesting poison. The magistrate today stated that a sufficient case was made out against Narayan to face a judge and jury at the next practical sitting of the Demerara Assizes. Meanwhile, a mechanic was today hauled before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan to answer for stealing from the mining camp where he is employed. 
Rwanda McDonald denied a charge against him which alleged that between December 21 and December 22, 2019 at Amamuri Bagdam Kayuni River, he sold two chainsaws valued $362,930 and two chainsaw bars valued $29,412, reaching the total value of $392,342, property of Innovative Mining Incorporated. According to reports, the man is attached to the Innovative Mining Company as a mechanic. On the day in question, he requested to travel to Georgetown for a funeral. Immediately before leaving the mining site, he was allegedly seen loading the articles in the truck after which he left the camp. A search was later carried out, which revealed that the articles mentioned in the charge were missing. The matter was reported and the defendant was contacted in Georgetown where he was arrested and subsequently charged for the offence. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield had no objections to bail but requested that conditions be attached. As such, bail was granted in the sum of $150,000 with the condition that McDonald reports to the Region 7 Police Office at Eve Leary every Friday until the completion of the matter. He is scheduled to make his next court appearance on January 17 at the Bartica Magistrates Court. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. <music>
schedule exercise at least a few hours before bedtime, and avoid stimulating activities before bedtime. 3. Check your medications. If you take medications regularly, check with your doctor to see if they may be contributing to your insomnia. 4. Avoid or limit naps. Naps can make it harder to fall asleep at night. 5. Avoid or limit caffeine and alcohol and do not use nicotine. All of these can make it harder to sleep and the effects can last for several hours. 6. Don't put up with pain. If a painful condition bothers you, talk to your doctor about options for pain relievers that are effective enough to control pain while you're sleeping. 7. Avoid large meals and beverages before bed. Drink less liquid before bedtime so that you won't have to urinate as often. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5 mm to 600 mm in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application, like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. England forced a dramatic 189-run victory over South Africa late in Day 5 of the second test in Cape Town to level the series at 1-1. With the Thoris still needing three wickets in the final four, man of the match Ben Stokes claimed them all to a cap-stunning all-round performance. He removed Dwayne Preteras and Anrich Nodjde in consecutive balls before dismissing Vaughan and Philander to secure the win with just 8.2 overs remaining. They look to be grinding their way to draw with opener Peter Mallon, making a superb 84 of 288 balls in debut before Rassi van der Dossen and Quinton de Gogh resisted for almost 34 overs. England's attack was also limited with all-time highest test wicket taker James Anderson, missing most of the last two sessions because of injury. But Dinoch slapped a long hop from Joe Dentley to mid-wicket to fall for 50, and Van der Dossen, who spent 140 balls over his 17 flicked storeboard to leg the gully. England's chance of victory was boasted, but they still needed Stokes to seize it. The all round defining sea movement and bounce in a devastating spell to secure the tourists' first win at Newlands since 1957. The third test of the format series starts in Port Elizabeth on January 16. The Ghana Jaguars' 13-month squad departed for Antigua yesterday to compete in the WICB Professional Cricket League Regional 4-Day Tournament this weekend. The 2020 PCL will bowl off on Saturday, January 9, with the Guyana Jaguars, who are the five-time reigning champions, beginning their title defense against the Leeward Island Hurricanes in a day-and-night pink ball game. Kimo Paul, Sherman Hedgemeyer, and Romario Shepard are currently on West Indies duty against Ireland, and once available, Shepard will be joining the Jaguars for the second round. The 13-man squad includes Tejnarayan Chanderpaul, Chanderpaul Hemraj, Leon Johnson, Kevin Sinclair, Tevin Imlak, Niall Smith, Christopher Barnwell, Vishal Singh, Devinder Bishu, Keon Joseph, Raymond Reefer, Anthony Bramble, and Virsami Permal. Their coach is Yusan Crandon with Shivnarayan Chanderpaul as assistant coach and manager. Charles Lee, reporting from TV, Sports Update. The Ghana Council of Organizations for Persons with Disabilities has once again received a financial donation from Tropical Shipping. The timely donation will be utilized to facilitate the establishment of two blind cricket nurseries and to further the development of blind cricket in regions 4 and 10. The funds received would also go towards the procurement of blind cricket gear and equipment for the aforementioned initiatives. Among the items to be purchased are blind cricket balls, cricket bats, batting gloves, wicket keeping gloves, gear and equipment bags, among other gear and equipment for the playing of blind cricket. The organization in partnership with the Ghana Blind Cricket Association will expose children and adults who are blind and visually impaired to the fundamentals of blind cricket through the nurseries and other blind cricket development activities. Ghana's four-member boxing team arrived in Cuba yesterday for a three-month encampment ahead of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics qualifiers. 
The 2020 Tokyo Olympic qualifiers is slated to punch off from March 26 to April 3 in Argentina. Cuban boxing coach Francisco Roldan, who previously worked with bantamweight champion Kevin Alicock in Cuba, will join coach Terence Poole, while coach Serbert Blake will join the team in March. This stint serves to give the Pugilists the necessary equipment and exposure to gear them for the qualifiers so they stand a chance at making their way to the 2020 Olympics. The 2020 Olympics will be held in Tokyo, Japan from July 24 to August 9. Mike Paris became the only boxer from Guyana and the English-speaking Caribbean to medal at the Olympics in Moscow in 1980. Chelsea Lee reported from TV Sports Update. Head of the Russian anti-doping agency said his country has little chance of winning its appeal against the four-year ban that prevents Russia from competing in all major sporting events. The ban was imposed by the World Anti-Doping Agency on December 9 over Russia's repeated doping violations. Yuri Ganas, head of Rosada, on January 3 disclosed Russian athletes might be banned from participating in international sporting events even under a neutral flag. He informed not everyone understands the hearings will be public and that during the hearings at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the world will learn about the real goals of Russia's sports officials. Ganas added when the world learns about it, it will be a blast. Everybody will be standing down dumbfounded and therefore, the hearings will be a huge blow to their reputation. WADA has determined that the copy of a database it received from Russia's National Drug Testing Laboratory was intentionally altered. That led to the decision to declare Rosada non-compliant and to impose the four-year ban against Russian sports teams. The ban means Russia's flag and anthem will not be allowed at events such as the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and soccer's 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Ghana said the ban will in fact have a longer impact. President Vladimir Putin, commenting on WADA's decision, said Russia was treated unfairly and called the move politically motivated. Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev has said that WADA's decision was a continuation of anti-Russian hysteria. Ganas called such statements special rhetoric to deflect the blame. Russia has since formally appealed to the CAS over WADA's decision. Chelsea Lee, reporter for MTV Sport Update. Cristiano Ronaldo scored his first Serie A hat-trick as Juventus beat Cagliari. Ronaldo took advantage of a Ragnar Klavanero early in the second half to give the champions the lead before scoring a penalty after Marco Rock fouled Paulo Taiblala. Portugal legend Ronaldo then set up Gonzalo Higuain to put Juventus 3-0 up. And moments later, he got his 56th career hat-trick when he slipped the ball on the goalkeeper, Robin Olsen. Ronaldo is in his best scoring run since his $99.2 million move from Real Madrid in 2018, scoring each of his past Serie A games. Juventus temporarily went top of the league, but Inter Millions 3-1 win in Napoli late on Monday, featuring two goals from Romelu Lukaku, has sent them back into first place and goal difference. It was Ronaldo's second hat-trick for Juventus to win scored three against Atletico Madrid in last season Champions League 16 times. He has scored three hat-tricks for Portugal since then. The former Manchester United forward is the first player since Alex Sanchez to score a hat-trick in the Premier League, La Liga and Serie A. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and Napa batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back to your to MTV's News Update. Now for some news in the region. There have been chaotic scenes at Venezuela's National Assembly with opposition leader Juan Guaido gaining access to the legislative building after a tense standoff with police. National Guards in a riot gear had formed a cordon around the building, but Mr. Guaido and another 100 opposition lawmakers broke through it. The move comes two days after Mr. Guaido was prevented from attending a vote to re-elect him as Speaker.
He called it a parliamentary coup. On Tuesday, Mr. Guaido arrived at the National Assembly building in a convoy of cars and buses carrying 100 lawmakers who back his re-election as Speaker. They were left through a number of checkpoints, but not through the cordon of riot police surrounding the building. A tense standoff ensued. About 30 minutes amid shouts of this is not a military barracks and the people rule, not the military, Mr. Guaido and his supporters pushed their way past the guards. Mr. Guaido tweeted footage of the moment they forced their way into the building. Their arrival prompted pro-government lawmakers to leave. Mr. Guaido sat down in the Speaker's chair. He and his supporters sang the national anthem before he was sworn in as Speaker. A power cut forced them to use the flashlights on their mobile phones. On international scene, 50 people have been killed and more than 200 injured in a stampede as Iranians gathered for the burial of a leading commander killed in a U.S. drone strike. The deaths is Qasim Soleimani's hometown of Karman led to the ceremony being delayed. The burial is the last in a series of funeral events that have brought millions onto the streets in Iran. His killing has raised fears of conflict between the U.S. and Iran. The head of the Quds force was tasked with defending and projecting Iranian interests abroad and was hailed as a hero by many in the home country. Immediately after his death, Iran threatened retaliation. To the U.S., he was a terrorist and explaining why he ordered the strike, President Donald Trump said he was acting on an imminent threat. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. And now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 859. Let's now turn our attention to the Denver Harbour Bridge and the Boris River Bridge schedules. This is where we wrap up this evening's broadcast, but before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Medical doctor decries poor health care system under the coalition. PPBC promises to restore subsidy to electricity and water for pensioners. Coalition overpaid $103 million to contractors, Auditor General Report reveals. Miner dies after boat collides with a tree in the Pomeroon River. And in sport, Ghana Jaguars off to Antigua to defend the 4 day title. Battery broadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Have a good night.